And that's when I'll do my next video in this grain to grass, grain to grass? Now then everybody, it's that rarest of things in the Geeky Dad household, a brew day. That's right, I finally got round to brewing something. <clears throat> now this is going to be the Mr. Harry Brit Ale. Mr. Harry Brit is a YouTuber who's a bit blue, a bit lewd, um, and I used to do movie reviews for him in a previous uh, YouTubing life. He contacted me and said if I, um, he'd like me to brew him a bit, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mr. Harry Brit is a fan of the English ale, so I thought I'd do. <laughs> Pardon? I can't hear what you're saying. You want a cuddle? Come here then. Do you want to be in my video? Yeah? So, <laughs> someone wanted to join me on this brew day and be in my video. Say hello, Iris. Hello. <laughs> so, as I was saying, Mr. Harry Britt enjoys himself an English ale, so that's what I'm going to make. Um, it's going to have Challenger and East Kent Goldings in it. Um, and it's very kind of reminiscent of uh, like a Tim Taylor's Landlord or something like that. What do you find so funny? I'm funny. Why am I funny? <laughs> Let's take a look at the ingredients. So in this bag, we've got four kilograms of Maris Otter crushed malt. And at the back there, you can see we've got 30 grams of crushed black malt. These are our hop additions. <laughs> we've got 20 grams of Challenger for pre for 60 minute edition. 20 grams of Challenger and 20 grams of East Kent Golding for quarter of an hour to go. And our flame out edition 20 more grams of Challenger and 40 grams of East Kent Goldings. And they'll be going in right at the end of the boil. I've also got a packet of Nottingham to ferment this with. <coughs> and that's that, so let's get to the brew day. All right, so we're ready to go. In here, I've got 28 liters of water and a Camden tablet. I've heated it up to 71 degrees Celsius and now I'm going to dough my grains in. Now the Camden tablet is just to prevent some of the chlorines in the water. We've got some hard water where we are. But let's get these grains in. Let's get the beer going. That is pretty full. Fortunately, I've got the dog on cleanup duty. So, I'm going to close up the lid. I've got an old sleeping bag. I'm going to wrap the whole thing in. I've already turned the heating off. Really should have planned ahead and done this off camera. But never mind. So there we go, we're going to leave that for an hour to mash. Right then, so we've had an unintentional 75 minute mash. I was only going to do a 60 minute mash, but I've been trying to make lunch at the same time. So it ran over a little bit. So let's get this sleeping bag off and let's check our temperatures. So we've lost about three degrees over the 75 minutes. It's pretty cold out here today, so I'm not too... Well, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. So, let's get these grains out. Now, just to uh, reiterate, I do pure brew in a bag. I don't sparge at all. So all the water I have in the kettle is the water I'm gonna have. Ah, 
that'll probably do us. So I'll let that come up to, temp to boiling temperature. Then I'll rejoin you for the 60 minute edition. So we've just achieved hot break. So we're going to go in with um, hop edition number one. We'll let that boil for a bit and we'll come back in 45 minutes for hop edition number two. So it's been boiling for 45 minutes. We're going to add a few things. We're going to add our quarter of a tablet of protoflock and we're going to add our second hop edition. And I'll see you guys in 15 minutes for the flame out edition. So here we are at the end of the boil. We'll put in the final edition of hops. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to let that steep for about 20 minutes. Then, after 20 minutes is over, I'm going to take the hot bag out, close the lid up, boil it up for about 10 minutes to kind of sterilise the inside of the tank. I'm going to cling film the top and leave it to cool. So, it's the next day. The uh, water has cooled down. As you can see, I cling filmed at the top. So, it's just been no chilling in the kettle. And now I'm just transferring it all into the fermentation vessel. And then I'm going to add my yeast. That should be good to go. And I, only, I know you all tune into our channel just to watch liquid being transferred from one vessel into another vessel. So here we go. So that's the end of this brewing video. Pitch the yeast. It's now in the corner. Um, fortunately the corner of my kitchen over there is about 19 degrees throughout the day so perfect place to ferment that <clears throat> let's hope it turns out alright um, took a gravity reading and unfortunately it's only 10.38 or thereabouts which means my efficiency is pretty low. Clearly, um, my equipment needs a bit of dialing in. I do know for brewing the bag, the finer the mill, the better. And I brine my grain pre-crushed, so that might have something to do with it. I see a variation in efficiencies depending on what I, grains I get. That will explain that. Um, so there. Yeah. So despite that, despite it not being the strongest of ales and there not being a lot of uh, sugars extracted from those grains, hopefully it still tastes pretty good. Um, once it's done fermenting, I'm going to dry hop it with uh, the same hops I use for boil. So more East Kent Goldings, more uh, Challenger. And it feels pretty good to have something fermenting in the kitchen again. Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to say that. So I just got finished um, bottling up the English ale. Um, so let me tell you uh, a little bit about what's gone on. First of all, the dry hop. I dry hop this for six days with 40 grams of Challenger and 40 grams of East Kent Goldings. Last time I did a dry hop on this scale, I dry hopped in a bag. This time, however, I just threw them all in there and let them do their thing and um, when I came to bottling it, I put a filter on my um, auto siphon so that the hot material stayed in the fermenter. Finishing gravity was uh, bang on 10.10. So from 10.38, we've got a 3.7, 3.8% beer. I've looked back at the footage I took when I brewed the video and I was a bit too gung-ho with the malt, I think. I think I must have got all kinds of dough balls, which you know would explain the poor efficiency when brewing this beer. However, 3.8 is nothing to be sniffed at. I was just aiming for something a bit higher, you know, in the four and a half to five range. So now that it's bottled, it can sit there and do its thing. This is the sample. It is murky as heck, but I'm not too bothered about that as I have just been kicking up all kinds of stuff, bottling it. Murky color as well. 
you know, like a very, um, very much more of on the brown side of straw, like almost like, um, like a flapjack sort of a colour. This is probably from the black malt I put in. I didn't put a lot in, but you don't need a lot just to affect the colour, do you? Let's give it a smell. Mmm, you get a lovely earthy spiciness from this. Mm. And I'm guessing that's that's from the hops. This is quite um, a heavily hopped beer for an English ale. Um, let's give it a taste. That's not bad. Tastes green, but you know what do you expect? With just when you're bottling things, it's going to need a little while to condition. It's got a lovely floral character to it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's nice. That's really nice. It's very traditional. Obviously, clearly using you know the English hops, so you don't not getting any of that citrus punch you get from hops I normally use, all the the American stuff. But this is very nice indeed. Hmm. Floral, earthy. Um. Basically, it's exactly the kind of taste I was looking for from all these hops. I think I've done the style quite well. I'm also quite pleased with the mouthfeel. It doesn't feel thin. I was worried it was going to feel very thin. It doesn't feel as full-bodied as I'd like. I, I thought it was going to be like drinking water almost, and it's not. And that's a good thing. So um, I'm pleased that the, um, the mouthfeel is not too bad, even though it's a low-gravity low beer. It's a very easy drinker. Very easy drinking indeed. Mm. I think that'd be quite good after, you know, three to four weeks conditioning in the bottle. And that's when you'll see us next. And so, it's time to taste the final product. It's been conditioning in the bottle now for four weeks, so it should be good and ready for the final taste test. Here it is. I'm going to open it and I'm going to get it in a glass. Hmm, so. Lightly carbonated. A bit brown. Somewhat clear. Not the murkiest of beers. Not the clearest of beers. But not bad. Not bad at all. So appearance-wise, it's all right. I think, though, it's going to belay a flavour to the beer that's not really there. Um, I got the colour by using a bit of black malt in the grain bill, rather than building up a malt profile with caro or whatever. So it's only really marisotta and a bit of colour. But let's see how it smells. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. It smells. It's got a very earthy sort of a tone, which I guess you'd expect from the hops that were used. Um, it's got a kind of a kind of aroma of like freshly pulled vegetables and things like that. Um, like if you if you grow your own veg or you've been to a place where they've been like a farmer's market where they've just been dug up straight away. It's got that sort of a, a quality to it. Um, it doesn't say it smells exactly like that. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, it, describe an aroma, which is, you know, difficult at the best of times. So let's dive in for a taste. It's not bad. Unfortunately, I think the light carbonation and the fact that it's only 3.8 means it's a bit thin. Hasn't really got the body for the beer I was looking for. 
hop flavour's good. It's got a good bitterness, a good solid like bitterness. Nothing too much. It's definitely different from all the other beers I've brewed to date. Yeah, all that bitterness has come in kind of in kind of almost a peppery bitterness, if that makes sense. It's not the same sort of pepper quality that you get from a Saison or something where yeast has added the pepper quality. But the, the hop bitterness that I'm getting from this beer is quite peppery. Mmm, pepper, floral character, very much like a, a pungent pollen sort of a taste. Like if you've ever walked through something like a very pollinated field and you kind of like breathe it in, you can almost taste it. It's got that sort of quality along with pepper notes and an earthy sort of aroma. It's very nice. I only wish I hadn't had such a disaster with my efficiency because this could have been quite a nice beer if it was a bit more full bodied. But it's certainly drinkable. It's certainly drinkable indeed. I think next time, if I'm going to do a beer similar to this, I'm going to use um, some either like something a bit more caramelly. I think this beer could do with a bit of caramel flavour. Not much. I don't want it to be sweet. Just a, a little bit that would kind of emphasise some of the other flavours in the beer. But it's not bad. You could certainly sink a few of these. I'm not sure if the carbonation is right. I'm not sure if it's too low. I mean, it's not like it's got no carbonation. Uh, let's see if I can get the head back. Why can't I just freaking swirl a beer? There, so it's not like it's got no carbonation. It's just not, maybe a bit low, maybe a bit low. But yeah, I can certainly drink a lot of that. A very good session beer. If, if a little weak. Maybe it doesn't need to be served cold. I've just pulled this straight out of the fridge and maybe it just needs to warm up a bit for it to be even better. But yeah, not bad. So thank you very much for watching this video. Did you prefer the grain to glass um, meth um, like video style rather than having separate videos for a brew day and then me describing the beer on various homebrew Wednesdays? Or do you prefer the old style where I do a brew day video and then in homebrew Wednesdays I'd show you the dry hopping and tasting and all that kind of stuff? So please let me know which of the two video types you prefer. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, I brewed this beer for Mr. Harry Britt. Please go and check out his channel. We may not be the target audience for Mr. Harry Britt, but he does do a few quality videos. So please go and check him out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Please give the video a comment or a thumbs up. Really appreciate all the comments and thumbs up I get from you guys on these videos. Please go visit the Facebook page. Please go visit the Twitter page. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the great brewing content I've got coming up. Really hope you enjoy the beers, Mr. Harry Britt, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you next time.